Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get default values for fields from a table in your Access database. We're going to create what's called a system defaults table. Today's question comes from Santos in Casa Grande, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Santos says, I have to change the default values for some of our fields on a regular basis. For example, we have different loan rates that change from time to time. When we go to enter loans, we have to keep constantly looking up the rates. I've been manually going into the table and changing the default value, but that's annoying to constantly have to make design changes to the table. I get that. Is there a way we could just store this value in a table and look it up? And this is just one value. I've got a bunch of them that I need to change regularly. Yes, Santos, what we could do is create what's called a system defaults value. It'll be a table with some values in it, and we'll just use DLOOKUP to pull those in as default values for the records in your database. So let me show you how to do it. Before we get started, prerequisite, go watch my DLOOKUP video if you haven't already. If you don't know how to use DLOOKUP, which is basically what this entire video is based on is DLOOKUP, go watch that first. Pause this video. Go watch DLOOKUP. It's free. It's on my website or it's on my YouTube channel. Go watch that now and then come back. Also watch Double Double Quotes, where I show you how to do Double Double Quotes inside of quotes. It's a little confusing. Go watch that video. It'll explain why. You'll see what those are in just a minute. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. Go get yourself a copy. You'll find links down below. Down below the video in that description box down there that, ever, that no one ever clicks on. It's down there. There's the link section. You'll find all kinds of free stuff down there. Other videos databases you can download, including this, my free template. So what we're going to do is create ourselves a defaults table. All right, so create table design, because you don't want to have to keep constantly going into the design of the database. You can change it with a table, right? Default ID, that'll be an auto number, and then a default value. And we'll leave that as short text. It doesn't really matter what this data type is, because Access is pretty good about doing a conversion. I'll show you in just a second. Save this as default T, that's my defaults table. All right. Now, let's put some data in it. Let's just put one thing in here for now. Default T. Let's just put, let's say, I'm just going to say, let's say our last name is going to be Rost, my last name. Let's say I'm doing a genealogy database and 90% of the people that I type in are Rosts. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Any, you can do this to any field. We'll do a couple more in a minute. All right. So save that. Now, notice default ID 1 is Rost. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the customer form. Now, this will only work in the form. You can't put this in the customer T's. Uh, oh, hang on. I got to close this guy first. You can't put this in the customer T's last name default value. It will not work down here. In fact, one of my students on my website in the forums found that out because I told him how to do this with a, deal, with a deal look up and he put it in. He's like, it's not working. It won't work in the table. You have to do it at the form level. So if you have this, if you have this field in multiple forms, you have to put it in multiple times. All right, so design view, go to last name, find under data, find the default value. Now, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. Zoom in. Okay, and this is going to be equals D lookup. What are we looking up? We're looking up the default value from the default table. Can't type today. Where the default ID equals one. All right, just go get default ID one. That's going to be our last name. Throw it in there. Hit OK. Close it. Close it. Save changes. Now, when I go to the customer form, if I go to add a new record, look at that. Last name pops in there as Rost. And if in a day or two from now, you have to change that value. All right, oh, wrong one. Come into the default table. Let's say now it's uh, Picard. Okay, so your loan rate changed, Santos, right? And you can take this default table and make it a form, just like I did all the whole rest of this. You make a form for it, you put it, in, you put your default values in here, right? Make it nice and pretty so anybody can edit it. But now when I go to the customer form again, go to add a new customer, boop, it's Picard. So that, that's how that works. It's basically a DLOOKUP from a system default table. Okay? Now, let's add a little spice to this. You're in Arizona, so you guys like spice down there, right? So, design view. All right, instead of just value and, and looking up an ID, that can get kind of confusing, right? In the table, I'm looking up, you know, ID equals one, then you gotta go to the table, figure it out. Let's have a default name in here too, default name. 
All right, and I'm going to put the name in front of value. So we got name value pairs. So I can have last name and then Ross. I can have customer sense and then a date. I can have family size and then a number, right? So now when I save this and look at it, all right, default name, we'll put in here last name or whatever you want to call it. All right, we could do um, customer sense and put a date in here, 1 1 1970. We could do family size and do uh, three as a default value, whatever. All right, we could do, uh, what's, what else do I got in the table here? Customer T, let's see, what, what other values can we do? Uh, default state, maybe, right? Default state here in Arizona, so put AZ. Okay, what else? Um, what else we got in here? Let's do credit limit, all right, credit limit. Maybe default today is 500. All right, see what I'm, see what I'm dealing with here? Now, let's go and fix the default value in here a little more complicated now because instead of looking at just a number one we have to find that value last name but here's the thing in here last name is actually a string so it has to be inside of quotes and if you put quotes inside of a string you have to use double double quotes that's why i wanted you to go watch that other video so that's double double quote here and then inside of here double double quote there so that'll say, look up the default value from the default T where the default name is, in quotes, last name. All right, and this will get converted to a single double quote, and this will get converted to a single double quote. Go watch that double double quotes video if you want more information on how this whole thing works. It's a little confusing, I get it, but you can use these single quotes in here. I don't like to. Because you find situations where there's a single quote inside of the string, like my fiance's last name is D'Angelo with an apostrophe in it, so we can't do that. So I like to use double, double quotes. Okay, anyways, hit OK, save it, close it, close it, open it back up again, and there you go, there's Picard. And now we just copy that to the other fields. So let's go to last name again. All right, we're going to go copy. And we can go, let's see here. What do we, oh, let's see here. We have state right here, right? Default value, paste it in there, change this to state. Save it, close it, close it. And then, whoop, there you go. You got Arizona, there's your default state. Do the same thing for family size. Right here, state, right? Copy. Should still be on the clipboard, but. Family size, we'll paste that in there. Customer sense, paste it in there. Credit limit, paste it in there. We'll just change them now. Credit limit. Yeah, I don't think there's an easy way to get this from that. Because you think the control source is right there, but you got no way of grabbing that control source. So you just got to copy and paste. So we got credit limit. Oh, someone just beamed in. We got credit limit, or customer sense. And, and family. There we go. Close it up, open it up, go to a new record, and there's all your default values. Now, if you got to change some of this stuff, right? Tomorrow, you got some different, you know, you're going to be entering 500 new records and everyone's from New York. Well, just change that to New York. And you want to give them a $1,200 credit limit. Default family size is one. Customer sense defaults to 1985. And the last name is going to be Spock. All right, close it up, go back to the customer form, add a new record, boom, there's everybody's default values. And that is how you do it. Now you can make yourself a nice little form based on the default T, right? Put this on a form, put a button on it right here. If you need to know how to do all that, go watch my blank database template where I show how to make this thing a continuous form, which basically is the same thing. If you want to learn more, and the extended cut for members, I'm going to show you how to calculate a default value that's not necessarily based on just some value that you can stick in a table. For example, what if that uh, loan rate that you talked about, Santos, what if that's based on a number of different variables? All right, this times this plus this. For example, in the extended cut, we'll calculate a discount rate for a customer based on how long they've been a customer. Okay, you've been a customer for one year, you get a 5% discount. You've been a customer for two years, you get a 10% discount, and so on. We'll make a little custom function, we'll call it calculate discount rate. All right, then we'll throw discount rate on our 
order form, and that'll be based on the customer sense field, right, from that customer. So we'll, we'll use a little function to calculate what their discount rate should be. All right, and then we'll figure out the discount on the order. We'll put it on the invoice. That's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of the extended cut videos, all of them, 200 plus of them. And of course, gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.